New at 7, a major advance for the country's climate change response. Green Climate Fund approves close to 33 million US dollars in projects. Antigua Distillery is now exporting its line of sanitizing products, spotting an opportunity amid adversity. A man who tried to elude the police during dramatic weekend incident is to spend a week in prison. And Prime Minister funds scholarships for young people in his constituency to pursue short courses at UV5 Islands. The ABS Evening News begins now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Hello, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the evening news here on ABS, Antigua's News Authority. My name is Garfield Burford. And I'm Terry Andrew. Thank you so much uh, for joining us here on this Wednesday night. Oh, we begin with a major developing story in the area of environmental sustainability. The Department of Environment has been successful in securing close to 33 million US dollars in funding from the Green Climate Fund, the GCF. That's right, Terry, and this will be crucial, and this will fund crucial projects in the government's efforts to mitigate the effects of climate change. Sherilyn Beza has the details on why this is crucially important to you. The Department of the Environment is the only department that is accredited to negotiate directly with the Green Climate Fund in the OECS. Only one. The DOE was successful in getting projects approved to the tune of 32.7 million US dollars. Minister Joseph explains the objective of the GCF build project is to achieve increased climate resilience. This will be achieved through ensuring the country's building sector can better withstand extreme climate events such as hurricanes. There are three components to the project, with the first being climate proofing interventions. Implemented in critical public service and community buildings to improve resilience and recovery form from extreme climate events for 54 government buildings including 32 buildings with renewable energy. This stage also includes building a bunker to store materials, medicine and equipment for hurricane recovery. The Environment Minister highlights the second component. The second component is climate change adaptation mainstream into the building sector and relevant financial mechanism to train government, private sector workers in the new way to build climate change impacts. This includes 600,000 US dollars for apprenticeship programs focused on getting women into construction and renewable energy installation. The minister also outlines another element of the second component. The train relevant staff from the National Office of Disaster Service, NODS, Development Control Authority, Public Works Department, as well as the private sector on operational procedures for long-term monitoring, maintenance, upscaling of climate resilience, renewable energy, and water harvesting technologies in accordance with the National Building Code. The third component relates to climate information services, such as improving early warning systems. Minister Joseph says the project comprises 32.7 million in grants and another 13.4 million in funding from the government of Antigua and Barbuda for a total of $46.1 million. It will be executed over a six-year period. Sherilyn Beza reporting for ABS News. Thank you, Sherilyn. Now, opportunity amidst adversity. It's a concept the Antigua Distillery is exemplifying as it reveals it has begun exporting sanitizing products it has developed since the, the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. ABS's Rakib Aparicio has a progress report on the no virus sanitizer line. When the country went into lockdown back in March, the economic impact on businesses was significant, with rum sales steadily dropping. Layoffs at Antigua Distillery became a very real possibility. Backed into a corner, 
Antigua Distillery Global Export Manager Calbert Francis says through entrepreneurial spirit, the distillery devised a solution. Most of the products that we use, or if not all of it, were produced overseas. And those producers were taking care of their own territory. And so there was a shortage of hand sanitizer, wipes, cleaning products, even down to bleach, there was a, there was a shortage. Using the alcohol normally reserved for making rum, Antigua Distillery launched the Novirus sanitizer line. A lot of the businesses have bought into it, and when I said it could be better, that's because a lot of businesses are still closed as well. Francis tells ABS, the reception to the sanitizing cleaner, hand sanitizer, and hand rub has been great. Production, he says, has also increased. Right now, we've pretty much gotten the, the hang of it and we can do upwards of eight, 900 cases per day. The no virus line has already reached a major milestone. They've begun exporting. We have done some exports, not a lot. We've done Montserrat is um, one of our biggest exports, Bermuda, all the way to Bermuda, and St. Kitts and Nevis. He attributes this to the fact that many Caribbean territories with their own distilleries are also producing hand sanitizer. We have partnered with a company all the way in the Bahamas who buy, buys alcohol from us to make local sanitizer as well. Here on the local market, with the removal of the Antigua Barbuda sales tax or ABST from sanitizing products, the no virus line has also become more affordable. Francis shares this update on unemployment. Most of our staff uh, a back out and we didn't have to lay off as much. What we did was we put them on days. So right now everybody's working four days. Beginning as soon as October, Francis tells ABS, no virus will be producing smaller bottles of hand sanitizer for as little as five dollars. Also on the table is repackaging for the eight ounce hand sanitizer. Rakib Aparicio reporting for ABS News. Now the no virus line can be purchased in leading supermarkets, pharmacies and service stations across the island. Meanwhile, Antigua Distillery Global Export Manager Calbert Francis says Antigua Distillery will be partnering with the Board of Education to supply schools with hand sanitizer. We have signed an agreement with them to supply 50% of the schools in Antigua and other companies taking up the other 50% and we start installation of the dispensers next week. Now, in another story, Antigua and Barbuda is set to receive a portion of the 4.5 million pounds sterling in funds from the United Kingdom to assist Caribbean countries. The British government is providing the funds to the Barbados-based Caribbean Development Bank Special Development Fund to be used to support countries in the region in their COVID-19 recovery. Now, the support follows uh, recent announcements of the UK's contribu contributing £3 million to the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, for the provision of essential medical supplies in the region. Now, UK Minister for the Caribbean, Baroness Sug, is quoted as saying, the UK government is proud to support our Caribbean friends and partners in these challenging times, and in particular, of the excellent work uh, being delivered through CDB's Concessional Special Development Fund, which targets those most in need, end quote. In a release today, the UK government says it is also supporting a range of other partners, such as the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, CDEMA, with COVID-19 modelling and surveillance. Well, it will take longer for cruise ships to start sailing the oceans again as the industry continues to be buffeted by the COVID-19 pandemic. The suspension of cruises up to the middle of September has been further extended. The Cruise Lines International Association announced that its members, which include nearly every line with the ship sailing out of American ports, will be suspending sailings until at least the 1st of November 2020. All North American cruise companies, including Carnival Corporation, Royal Caribbean Group, Norwegian Cruise Lines Holdings, Disney and MSC Cruises are part of the industry trade group. They added that their members will continue to monitor the situation with the understanding that they will revisit uh, the situation and a possible further extension on or before September 30, 2020. CLIA further stated, should conditions in the U.S. change and it becomes possible to consider short, modified sailings, it could consider an earlier restart. 
Now, we're slowing now on an Antigua nurse uh, producing sterling work on the front lines in the battle against COVID-19 in the U.S. state of California. Chief Nursing Officer uh, Evelyn Wade has uh, been lauded by the Delano Regional Medical Center, DRMC, in California for her service in leadership. Nurse Wade, uh, apart from her sterling contribution to the hospital, persevered in completing her master's in nursing amid the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has killed more than 12,000 people in the U.S. state. Nurse Wade began her career right here in Antigua as a nurse midwife in community clinics for 14 years before migrating to the United States. Well, in a release, uh, the DRMC is quoted as saying, congratulations uh, to our much-loved and appreciated Evelyn for her hard work and dedication to our hospital. It's another example of uh, how perseverance and professionalism amid crisis can yield success. Congratulations to her indeed. Now, the country's defense force says it continues to reap success from its agricultural endeavors on 1.5 acres of land. Major Troy Lake says the force has expanded it into animal husbandry to include pigs and goats and will soon be cultivating an orchard as well. An orchard as well. He outlines the current products. We have five crops also that we actually sustain, which are pumpkins. We have sweet potatoes, um, cassava. We plant, we've planted watermelons and butternut squash. Uh, we have a few that we're actually trying our hand with, such as the tomatoes, etc., the regular stuff, spinach, okra. But sustainable crops, we have butternuts, and those are the four that we've spoken about. The Major says the force's food bill will be significantly reduced with the growing success of the farm, and there are plans afoot to extend the acreage used. The intent is to reduce the ABDS food bill. Um, in doing so, we, once that happens, then we can look towards other avenues for defense spending rather than on the main products for food. We have produced a business plan that shows us what we intend to do for the next three years or so. So at the moment, as I said, we have a very small acreage. And uh, within the first year or so, we intend to try to lower the food bill by at least 10%. Equally important, Prime Minister the Honourable Gaston Brown is providing the funds for 10 young people from his constituency to pursue short courses at the University of the West Indies. The Member of Parliament for St. John's City West says he wants the constituency to be the most successful and competitive in the region. He says uh, there is a lot of talent in the Point and Villa area, but urged the young recipients to not sit on their talents, but motivate themselves to the highest levels. Everything is not about leisure. Life is about balance. And the best way to lift yourselves out of poverty is through education. It has worked for me, and I'm absolutely sure it will work for you. Speaking to the recipients at his office this morning, Prime Minister Brown cautions the world is becoming more competitive and advises them not to get left behind. The 10 week online uh, course uh, includes instructions in project management, uh, human resource management, introduction to facilities management, and effective management and leadership. Other courses include introduction to digital marketing and supervisory management. There is also a four week workshop on law for banking profession. The Prime Minister says he expects 100% success from the group, advising it's easy to begin but takes effort to complete a course. And I hope that this will serve as the motivation or the impetus for you to pursue higher levels of learning, possibly at the postgraduate level, and to develop the discipline from now so that you can complete any future area of studies. Prime Minister Brown also told the young people about the various opportunities available to the country in the country to assist in their development. These include the government's Second Chance Program and the Entrepreneurship Development Fund. He also encourages them to pursue full courses at UWE Five Islands and open campuses. Let's stay with the theme of education. Alternative measures have been announced to continue instruction for the performing arts when physical classes resume. Now, while this will not be done at the schools, at least during the first few weeks, the Cultural Development Commission has, or division, has a plan B. ABS's Kim Emanuel Baird spoke with Director of Culture, Khan Cordes, about those plans today. The Ministry of Education has decided to defer the teaching of performing arts for the first few weeks when physical classes return in September. This is being done as the education system adapts to a new normal amid the COVID-19 pandemic. 
As a result, the Cultural Development Division has decided on alternative one-on-one -on -one classes for performing arts at the division. And are currently doing. We have engaged the students from the communities in one-on-one -on -one sessions, right? The music has already started. We are creating plans now to continue to restart the some of our larger groups, so like the uh, the national choirs, the national youth choir, national choirs. The director of culture says these one-on-one -on -one sessions will continue in the interim and will allow instructors to pinpoint weak areas and hone talent quicker. Cordes added the importance of performing arts in schools. I believe that, that the arts is one of those necessary things for life. I mean, can you imagine going through that entire COVID period without entertainment, without the arts, to keep, you know, just to keep you... Um, to, to keep you hopeful. He says it's not only about teaching practitioners and entertainers, but passing on knowledge from generations before. And he looks forward to the return of performing arts to the physical classroom. Kim Emanuel Baird, ABS News. Thanks, Kim. So that update will certainly be following that closely as well, Terry, and to keep our viewers updated on that. Mm -hmm. Coming up right after the news with Ursula Charles Jr., a program you can't afford to miss. Well, this evening, Education in Prime Time focuses on children with learning disabilities as we, as we hear from the administrators who work with those children. Then right after Education in Prime Time at 8 is Modernly Startup at 9. Uh, programs here all across our platforms on ABS. Hosts R. Anderson Edgel focuses on human resource management and why it is crucial to businesses. So two powerful programs back to back right after the evening news, 8 o'clock and then at 9 o'clock. So education in prime time at 8, what hardly start up at 9. Mm -hmm. Recovering Antigua and Barbuda and the world, this is the ABS evening news still to come in this newscast. Motorists who attempted to elude the police over the weekend caught by the long arm of the law. We'll tell you about his prison sentence this week and active cases of COVID-19 remain at two in Antigua and Barbuda as latest dashboard shows no new cases. All those stories and many more upcoming on the ABS Evening News on air and online. Stay with us, please. At Najico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long, but after all these years, you just can't let go. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Let's talk small business empowerment. Bigger, bigger, better, better, smarter, smarter. Be prepared for the new normal by ensuring that your school or business is equipped with the technology required to operate at the next level. Reimagine your business and maximize your customer reach from financing online technology innovations, safety and operational equipment, to commercial computer systems or just working capital support. CUB can help you to remodel and restructure. Call us today at 481-8285. Let's talk. Growing minds need the right tools. 
Vacationing is over and summer is gone. The new school year is right around the corner. Growing minds deserve the best tools. At Harper's Office Depot, we carry the widest range of school supplies in Antigua and Barbuda. We stock a full range of art supplies, technical drawing supplies, preschool supplies, and the widest range of pens. Visit us on the corner of High and Market Street in downtown St. John's and at our superstore at Village Walk Center on Friars Hill Road. Growing minds need attention and love. Give the growing minds in your family the best. Give them all their back-to-school supplies from Harper's Office Depot. And for every $200 spent, get a free Crayola gift. Harper's, we mean school business. Welcome on this update from the courts now. The man who was caught while attempting to evade police officers over the weekend will spend the next seven days in Her Majesty's prison. 19-year-old Montel Barton of Point appeared in court on Monday and was convicted on three charges. Barton was sentenced to seven days in prison on driving without a license and another seven days for dangerous driving. The sentences will run concurrently. He was also fined $2,500 for driving without insurance. Meanwhile, 20-year-old Melvin King Jr. of Herberts, uh, who rented the vehicle for Barton, was fined $1,000, and his license has been suspended for three months. On Saturday, a night, uh, on Saturday night, Barton, who was driving a Toyota Vitz, attempted to elude law enforcers after allegedly committing a traffic infraction. The driver crashed into the back of another vehicle on Independence Drive, while a bus driver who crashed into a tree in a desperate attempt to avoid a head-on collision with the Vitz. The Vitz reportedly crashed into a concrete wall on Upper Bishopgate Street. Now, slain customs officer Nigel Christian is to be laid to rest. ABS's uh, Jessica Russell reports. The 44-year-old was kidnapped from his McKinnon's home in July and later found dead near New Winthrop's with gunshot wounds to his upper body. His murder has caused public outcry and people have protested calling for outside assistance from England-based Scotland Yard or the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Royal Police Force of Antigua and Barbuda says its officers are continuing investigations. Two weeks ago, the Honorable Minister for Information, Melford Nicholas, said all support has been given to solve the crime. This is a sensitive matter uh, all that we need to know is that uh, the resources that the police high command requires from the government um, have been provided and uh, through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Legal Affairs. Christian is a second customs officer to be attacked in less than a year. Last October, Colonel Benjamin was shot in his legs but survived. No one has been charged in connection with either case. The customs department will be closed on Thursday for Christian's funeral. Jessica Russell, ABS News. That's just an update now from the health ministry regarding COVID-19. The country's case count remains at 94 with two active cases following the latest tests carried out at Mount St. John's Medical Center. The health ministry said seven, sent 10 samples tested there since the publication of the last dashboard on Monday returned all negative results. Recoveries remain at 89 and a total of 1,815 people have now been tested in Antigua and Barbuda. So 10, 10 samples tested there at the Mount St. John's Medical Center since the publication of the last dashboard on Monday, all returning negative results. In another area of interest, uh, poultry farmers are among those reeling from the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. Chairman of the Antigua and Barbuda Poultry Association, Marvin Joseph, says there has been a significant blow from the closure of hotels during the tourist season. Poultry is a planned production, so you would have prepared before for the hotel upcoming hotel season. From the time COVID hit, you're, you're in a quandary because you have all this, these eggs. 50% you, 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 of your market has been shut down. Joseph says farmers uh, have had to sell to consumers for much less than what it cost them to produce the eggs. He says farmers also culled birds uh, because it became un unaffordable to feed them. The chairman says, however, they're beginning to see an upturn uh, with the supermarkets. He says chickens aren't hatched on the island and closed borders uh, also present a challenge with shipping them in. We've had um, some problems from within the region itself where by the time the chicks get to us, um, a large amount of them have died because of um, being stranded at airports and so on for, for a period of time. Joseph says the chickens are only one day old and in the last shipment, farmers had a loss of 50%. The chairman says discussions will be held with the government on the possibility of establishing a hatchery right here on island. He says uh, other challenges are the cost of the feed and availability of clean water. 
which are being addressed. Now, the Poultry Association is also outlining the key challenges being faced by its members in expanding their operations. We get our report on this tonight from Shaolin Bisa. We have been pushing before the COVID and we're pushing even more so now to ensure that farmers get the leases that um, at an affordable rate um, that we can have that security of tenure. So when you approach the banks, that's one of the things that will be checked off of the list. He says farmers are also hoping for access to export markets, especially for eggs. And he has been self-sufficient on eggs for, for quite some time, many years. They have been self-sufficient on eggs, and that's, been, that, that's improving daily. At, at times, we have a glut there, there, of course, when it comes around the Christmas time. Joseph says farmers need government's support to ensure people respect what's being produced locally. The Poultry Association chairman says local produce are of a better quality and consumers can be assured of freshness. If most persons knew the timeline um, on when the chicken that they eat was slaughtered to when it gets to us, they probably wouldn't eat it. Imports, sometimes you're looking at six months, nine months, 18 months. You look at the package date on, on, on some of these items. We don't pay attention to that. Joseph urges residents and supermarkets to support local farmers. Sherilyn Beza reporting for ABS News. Well, almost 40 more people have recently benefited from the Rotary Club of Antigua's Food Voucher Program. The initiative started in March with funds from the Mill Reef Club and helps around 400 people each month who have fallen on hard times because of the current pandemic. However, more people have requested help from the program. Now, Thriftings, or Thriftings, an environmentally conscious group, sold used clothes to donate to the Rotary Club. The Rotary uh, Club's president, Kevin Sulson, says the money has extended the initiative's reach for the month of August. The overall uh, check we got from them was $5,550. We were able to use that to support some of the individuals who we have uh, the, you know, the, the additional request for, who falls outside of the, the structure initial donation that we got from the Mill Reef Club. Now the recipients got vouchers valued at EC $150. From that, we were able to support 39 individuals um, on, on a one-off basis from that specific um, fund. Imani Nevers, one of the four women involved in thriftings, says it's been an honor to partner with a Rotary Club to help families. Well, Colin James is again offering himself to run on an ABLP ticket in, an old, in the Old Saints East and St. Luke constituency in the next general elections, constitutionally due in 2023. James was defeated in the constituency by the UPP's Jamal Pringle in the 2018 general elections, but says he intends to work twice as hard to ensure success. The caretaker issued a media release on Tuesday saying, although the outcome of the last general elections did not meet his expectations, he has held no grudges against the voters of the constituency. He outlined several initiatives he has been undertaking in the constituency, including a food package distribution, which started before the COVID-19 pandemic and has intensified with the advent of the disease. As ABS News reported in recent weeks, Neil Cochran has signaled he will be seeking to represent the ABLP in that constituency in the next general elections. Our well, that's the we're bringing in end to a look at national development stereo. What a packed news evening it is. Oh, certainly. All right, when we come back, we'll turn our attention to news overseas and tell you about uh, these stories upcoming. Fresh policy under the 